Hey guys, happy Wonderland Wednesday. It's good to not see your faces, but know that you're there. So thank you everybody for joining live. I'm really excited about today's guest. We have Lori Allen joining us today. I just recently um, met Lori and she is one of the most enigmatic, amazing, uh, beautiful women that I have had the chance to meet. And I'm really excited. Um, you probably are familiar with a ton of her roles. She is Pearl on SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, she's also the boss in Metal Gear Solid, a game that we shared. Um, she's been she's been working in voiceover for a million years. She's Bonnie's mom on Toy Story. Um, she's in Fantastic Four. So we're gonna go ahead and um, get Laurie to join right now. Yes, yes, she wants to be in this be in this video. Hey John. Hey Carrie. Thanks everybody for joining. Hey Chris. Oh, it's good to see your faces. Hi, Hi honey. Hey. Hey, let's give wonky connection. No. Okay, good. How's it going? How's it going? Is our internet a little better? It sounded wonky. Internet is going like, e uh, oh, oh. I don't know. Yeah, Some, maybe like, somebody watching can tell us if they can hear us both. Hello. I can hear you now. You sound amazing. Okay. You can sound you amazing. You yes. sound amazing. Um, it's a little, a little bit. Yeah. Was... Um, hold on. Hey guys, steady, steady. Well, 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 let's try this for maybe one more minute. And if we're still having technical issues, then we'll drop off and rejoin. Okay, that sounds okay. good. Hi, look at Thanks. your festive blue um, tree behind you. Well, I'm half Jewish, I go, I go both ways. My mom's Southern Baptist, my dad's Jewish. So I have a blue Hanukkah colored Christmas thing. And I also was wrestling with the dog, so my finger is bloody. So if you're like, oh my God, she's bleeding. Um, so yeah. Like yes, we are also a bolty kind of family. My husband's Jewish, and I was raised Swedenborgian. There you go. See, but not until yeah. There you go. So there you Wait, go. You go both ways. I knew I liked you. Right, like my friend Alessandra. She's so cute. She's a Jewish and Italian, and she calls herself a pizza bagel. And so yeah. we were talking about ASMR that Alessandra does. I was grateful she had me on as a guest. Very silly. ASMR. I was like, I think I now know what ASMR is. I don't find it tingling down the back of my neck, relaxing like how you're supposed to. But anyway, call her pizza bagel. because She goes both ways, Italian, Jewish. She's like, what would be a Christian thing? I was like, I don't know, like cucumber sandwiches. So I'm like, I'm a, I'm a cucumber bagel sandwich. I don't know. Anyways, it's always relating to food somehow. It sounds delicious. For sure. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Um, I, you know, I, I, we've really only just gotten to know each other the past couple of weeks. And I got to say, you have um, such a magnetic personality and such a warmth to you. Um, I'm really inspired by, you know, not just your career, which has been amazing. And I'm sure all our fans on here can attest to that, but just um, you're so warm and delightful and wonderful. So... <laughs> No, I, I come from very fabulous artistic parents who are warm and fuzzy, touchy-feely people. And I, I find the older I get, those are the kind of people that raise me up, you know. And so I want to be, uh, I don't know, like I feel like it's quantity. I'm Yeah, quantity, not quality. So I feel like when I surround myself with those yummy, juicy people, then that brings out the best in me. And then you have more to give to other people in your profession or as a parent and your example and your amazing body of work is just stellar and inspiring. So oh. yeah, I feel like the older I get, the more I want to kind of make sure that you leave the world a better place and have something to impart, hopefully, you know? So yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I, I know a lot of our fans know you as a voice actress, but you are also a writer, uh, producer, and coach. Um, so, you know, we have a lot to talk about. Um, it seems like a lot of voice actors do um, have multiple talents, um, but I'm most curious about um, some of your writing projects um, to start. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, about that? Only if I can wear my goggles. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Goggles and a shield. 
and my dogs may start barking or they may want to i could not it took me t 25 minutes to figure out how these go the dog thinks this honey this is not a toy these are goggles that go into a shield they're kind of cool they look like my new glasses just sands this and some actual stuff down here um are they are they for face protection yes look the whole thing as COVID gets strange and mutated okay. I've had these on the table to try to figure out how to use this, and it goes like this. Ah, yes, a face shield. I feel very 90s, like I'm in a, here in my car, I don't know, one of those crazy, like, MTV videos, in car, like that, yeah. Bumble, I don't, before I tell you about my writing, which is really spectacular, hold on, my little one, the chunky monkey one wants to say hi, this is Bumble. Oh. Hi. Hi, I gave them a CBD treat so they would hopefully be quiet. But he loves being on camera. Say hi, Auntie Allison. Hi. Yeah, she's in Alice in Wonderland too. You're having a CBD cookie. All yeah, right. Man. If I had <laughs> known. <laughs> I did a lot of writing as a kid. I would write plays for our neighborhood. And that's why I was like, oh, I like to cast, direct, and be in it, and produce it. All those control issues come in handy, you know. And then my mom was in the theater. My dad a, a, writes beautiful songs. He's a phenomenal songwriter and a writer um, of just, um, just amazing musicals and jingles and songs. He's the most, like, the funniest guy who wrote some most tear-jerking ballads. I'm like, <laughs> Dad, that's so beautiful. And then my mom is a great theater producer, um, um community theater diva, um, just wonderful director and an actress. I really did learn everything I know from them. I'm so grateful. And so I was always encouraged to write. So I want to write, a, you know, a play for the whole neighborhood. They were, okay. We want to put it on the art. Okay. And then, um, and then I wrote a little bit, not too much more, just creative stuff. And then uh, I did the Groundlings in New York, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, Gotham City, Gotham City, Groundlings East. And so I just, I love writing crazy characters. And I would rewrite them all over again as I was moving to, or different, you know, shades of these, like like a cookie, like a like a Rosie Perez type character, and like Liza Minnelli. I would just write these crazy characters, so that I could be. I think I told my friend I want to say I had almost like eleven auditions for Mad TV over so many years. At some point, I was like, you know what? It's all, it's okay. It's not working out. Um, and so. <laughs> Uh, in Living Color, I had to write a bunch of stuff for that, which is really great, and um, and just all that. So I, I I really actually missed that, but I most recently wrote a great uh, a great pilot, if I do say so myself. Lots of fun, fancy words, but really, it's just based on my crazy life, which is called Do the Voice. And so I think that anybody that's uh, that knows us would probably really enjoy it because it's based on my crazy life after going through a really hard breakup. Um, it just kind of birthed itself. I mean, you know, as a singer songwriter person, sometimes it just comes out and you're like, I, bleh, I just vomited a show about my life. Um, so still finding the right home for it. We have some really exciting things coming up as to where that might be, especially during this time, people need all this content. So I always encourage people to like, I hate when people say to me, make your own content, make your own content. But it's true, at least just stay creative. Because it's such a shit show of a time right now. It's scary. You know, it's crazy out there in the world. So to stay creative and um, you just never know what's going to happen. I mean, I put it to bed for three years. No, three and a half years. And then now all of a sudden there's like another fancy little fancy brush your finger spark about it all. So, yeah, it's about being are you lovable? Are you bleepable? Are you hireable? You know, <laughs> and um you know, after a terrible breakup, like what that, you know, what doesn't, uh, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. So it's really, it's lovely. It's funny. I break out into song and dance in the middle of it for no good reason. It's a little like crazy ex-girlfriend meets Fleabag mm -hmm. uh, with a touch of like a smattering of the comeback. So I think anybody, it's sort of like, you know, in the, in the, in the backdrop of, of, of the voiceover world and home studio and all that crazy stuff. So it's really fun. It's really fun and how my neighbors were all like, what is she going through with all that craziness and screaming and crying? And um, so it's really funny. And it's on, it's on do the voice.com. So you can check it out. Really? Okay. So the full pilot or just clips? The full pilot. Yeah, we didn't want time. We wanted to, um, I'm sorry, I'm missing comments. I'm, I'm, I feel bad. I want to say hi, 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 hi. Um, what's up? You're so cute. Um, I, uh, we weren't going to put it there. And then I was like, well, of course we're going to put it there. Cause after a certain mile, when we got 
interest from certain networks that I can't say, they were like, don't, we don't want you to put it up. We don't want you to put it up. And then I was like, I'm going to put it up because it needs to get out there and have a little life. And that really helped. So get your stuff out there. It, Cause you just don't know who it's going to help. Who's going to want to watch it. Who's going to find it interesting, helpful, healing, hilarious, want to produce it, may chop it up into mini episodes. Uh, who knows? You know, you just have to throw it against the wall and be like, and see what sticks. Yeah, it against the wall. <laughs> and my uh, dog makes the biggest that's throw. gonna be the screenshot for this. Yeah, exactly. So you can see. My big dogs would have the most awful barfs when they were sick, right? The little dog has the most convulsing. I, I don't care if they, anybody screenshots it, but he's like, mm -hmm. it looks like he's going to do a modern dance, like Martha Graham thing for a, a, a 15 pound dog, and it's like, mm -hmm. and it's this, like, it's quite. It's quite something. It's like a whole theater experience. It's like, it's like every single night with me. I think I figured out our issue. I think we're what? having a thing. I think I figured out what's going on with our song, with our audio. It's what? when we talk when we talk at the same time. It's cutting our, us off, which has happened before, but it's not always happened. So I will do my best to nod and um, not uh, listen verbally, <laughs> which and I'm. I'm very very, very chatty, clearly, and I talk really fast, so it'll be good for me to, and just listen to you, and then I will respond appropriately. <laughs> I feel like we're in a Meisner class right now, like. I love you. 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 That makes me feel happy. That makes me feel happy. <laughs> that makes me feel so happy. That makes me feel so happy and so I'm sorry. I, I was pushing a little that time <laughs> trying to get trying to get our Meisner to explain to people what Meisner is and how that even I, I mean I know what Meisner is, but I want you to explain yeah. it better. And so I can tell you a funny story about doing having a Meisner fellow actress on a set. Uh so Meisner, Sanford Meisner was a, a famous acting coach um in early nineteen hundreds and um he really wanted you to not to come from the other actor and um, take your emotions off them and not just uh, like Stanislavski is like, imagine your dog died, but in the scene, your wife died. So it, I booked a great Grey's Anatomy though. All, it, every, my manager's like, dog, did another animal die? I'm just checking, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> you always book something when somebody dies and I'm like, oh, okay, great. So, you know, it comes in handy, but yes. So instead of pulling <laughs> on your, Life, life. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. You, pull, you pull it off the other actor. Um, and uh, I really like it. I really, I, I like it. Um, what did you say? I really like it. I really like it. I really like it. I really like you. <laughs> You're fucking like, what in the hell? You guys can look up Meister and know what we're doing. Can um, I tell you a little bit about working with the Meister? young, fabulous actress. Yeah, tell us the story. Okay. Once upon a time, I did uh, a pilot. No, I did. It was a little indie movie. And my, um, my wife uh, was Nicole Sullivan, who's a good friend, who's a hysterical, wonderful animal activist, actress extraordinaire from Mad TV. You guys know her from every single thing in the world. So we were moms together, uh, groovy partners of this kid. And then that kid had a best friend in the show and uh, in the movie. And we were talking about Meisner and veganism while we were waiting to in the makeup trailer and everything. So it's really fun and just beautiful, amazing gal. And I said something about how do you practice Meisner practically on the set, you know, cause you can't always do the repetition exercises that we were poking fun of, but that we both have done and used and enjoyed and learned. And she was like, well, I just usually talk to an inanimate object. And for some reason I just thought, I don't know. It just got my silly bone. Like, <laughs> so Nicole and I, we were in a scene and I had shared that with her. And so we were sort of telepathically looking at the inanimate object and sort of mumbling to ourselves. And we got in big trouble. We got in big trouble because we were laughing so hard, um, kicking each other to the table. And the girl was like, are you guys talking about my Meisner technique on the set? And I was like, no, 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 no. And Nicole kicked me so hard. It was, it was hysterical. So anyway, don't make fun of Meisner in real life, but use it because it's an amazing practice. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Inanimate Talk to object. You have a good intimate read and you're not just saying words. Talk to, to the hand. Yeah, talk to the hand. Talk to <laughs>
Not that way, talk to the ham. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned veganism. You are, um, it was yesterday Happy World Vegan Day? Yeah. Oh, Happy World Vegan Day. Love so much. Uh, Sarah Siegel reminded me because I was preoccupied. My family has some health issues. So um, she was able to, to remind me and I just, I couldn't even go to sleep. I was just looking at pictures of cows and pigs and goats and sheep and for like a good, like almost an hour, I just sat and cried at how beautiful animals are and how that they feel they love their young. I mean, if you only if people only knew how smart pigs and cows were, and how that the minute their young is taken away for, for purposes of food and dairy and all that kind of stuff, that they go through extreme excruciating torture as mothers. They're just beside themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I just like it means a lot to me that if people could replace like just the idea of like their kitty or their doggy and put it in the in their mind's eye of like a cow or a pig, you wouldn't consume or take their young away immediately and all that kind of stuff. And it's also the number one leading cause of, of global warming is, you know, our animal agriculture. So it's really important to just like, you know, what's the one thing you can do is to not eat meat. And our taste buds freak out at first, but then it's really, it's, it's so easy and wonderful to be vegan. Like I just thank you to all my friends, like my friend Annie and my friend Alessandra and two other friends, my friend, Joe Kershaw of Sound and Fury Casting, mm -hmm. like they're all doing Daily Harvest, which is a great um, food delivery. It's like totally plant-based. It's delicious. I've, lo I've lost three pounds in one week just because, you know, nervous COVID eating, not me. Hmm. No, I don't know anything about that. But so I, I it's easy to think, goodness, we well, you can have Daily Harvest anywhere. There's purple carrot, there's all these great things. And it just starts with maybe thinking about thinking about it in terms of that way, like aligning your morals and your values. Like, I love animals. So then like, why would you eat them? And at, again, at first your taste buds go, wait a minute, but there are plenty of like, like in the impossible burger, impossible burger beyond meat, you know? So those are easy things to give up. And I just, little by little, there are just things you can eliminate from your diet and you'll feel better. I'm 54. I've never had clearer skin. My hair grew out. My cholesterol dropped by like 22 points. When did you go vegan? Uh, about six years ago, almost six years ago. So I certainly wish I had done it sooner. I had had a, I have a ton of food allergies. So I was used to out of my diet, but what was I bringing into my diet? You know what I mean? So it was like, if you can eat the rainbow. So right, how are you having just even like adding in tomatoes, the different colors, there's all those sweet baby potatoes that are like the purple potatoes and all that. Just bring color into your diet and I love pomegranate seeds. I'll put them like on a baked potato, like spinach with a sweet potato that's already green, orange, red. And then you can still pick out and like have your popcorn with like vegan butter that's so much better for you because it doesn't have palm oil in it. So there's all these easy ways. And thank goodness we live in bigger cities sometimes. But like I said, nowadays, even um, I was doing my celery juice, which I, I tend to forget to do. But then when I do it, I feel so much better. Um, in the morning? Uh, yeah, really mm -hmm. helps and skin and bloating and anxiety and all that stuff. You sort of are like, good morning. I don't think I need the, even my one big cup of coffee. Um, but what's the food place that's, that seems like it would be really cheesy? It's, I think it might even be like Food Emporium or something. There's a whole, there's organic food everywhere now at Ralph's, at Pavilions, at Vons. It's just, it's so easy to eat cleanly. And, you know, we're all going to be challenged with something in our genetics cholesterol, diabetes, whatever. So it just keeps, it just puts a pin in all that. And it's like, why not save the planet, save the animals, be compassionate and stick a pin in your health and, and reverse some, you know, you can reverse just about any kind of, you know, major things like heart disease, diabetes, all that stuff can get so much uh, wildly, wildly uh, better. I'm completely, you know, gone. It seems like a no brainer to me. I think I'm going to start tomorrow with some celery juice. Yeah, celery juice. I love celery juice. Uh, the medical medium, he's amazing. I want to type that in there. I have my computer, my phone propped up crazy, but the medical medium, I love him so much. You're sort of like, this is crazy. This can't be real. Oh, I, we, got some, we got some hearts for medical medium. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to put celery juice. Yeah, he's celery great. Juice. And he talks, he has all these things like liver detox lenses. And so he's amazing. And I saw on him and I'm so glad I did because, you know, like I, I would be considered a junk food vegan compared to so many other people who eat, for, like, I don't know if I could do raw veganism because my stomach is, my tummy is sensitive, but I'm sure you get used to it. And it's uh -huh. not, 
you know, I still have my oatmeal with blueberries and I put nut butter in in the morning. It feels like Christmas morning every morning. I'm like, <laughs> oat milk is so much better for you than, I mean, any milk, milk and cheese is so disgusting to me because it's basically liquid dairy. I mean, liquid rather. And like how they get it, how they impregnate cows. I mean, it's just once you sort of Google a few things, you're like, mm, yeah. <laughs> and there's so many healthy alternatives that are actually like vegan ice cream, like from Van Leeuwen is my favorite. And it's made out of cashews and coconuts. So it's actually real food, not just like dairy from a cow mm -hmm. that doesn't, it's like, everyone's like, oh, I can't digest dairy. Well, yeah, because it's another, <laughs> no wonder you don't digest it well. It's certainly not good for voice actor people. <laughs> um, Need to, oh, which reminds me, I made a cup of hot tea and I left it in the house. That's all right. Um, yeah. So I'm taking it back, though, to um, do you feel, because you, you moved to Los Angeles, you're an actress as well. How, what was your first big voiceover role? My first big voiceover role, sorry if you suddenly hear the dogs erupt into crazy barking. Um, <laughs> my little rescue boys, two street rescues. Um, my first big voiceover, my very first voiceover job actually in was in New York. I went to NYU. I went to Emerson for two years, then NYU for you two years. You went to Emerson? Yes. Oh, my God. I you forgot. To yeah. Yes. Except you're like 15 years younger than me, but yes. I didn't know you went there, but you graduated from NYU. Yeah. I went to Emerson for two years, then NYU for the other two. Oh, and no way. Graduated NYU, stayed in New York for eight years, nine years. And my first, well, my first voiceover job was when I was little, when I was five for like Archway cookies. And I was like, <laughs> these cookies are delicious because it was about oatmeal cookies. And then my dad was, I get, dad said, can I actually, because my dad went into advertising. I don't think it was for my dad. And they're like, well, we didn't have to, feed, you know, feed you much of excitement of lines. I'm like, it's about cookies. You know, I have such a sweet tooth. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And then my first, like, sort of, but I've been, I've been a SAG after member since 1971. Wow. Union girl. I'm a big union proponent. Um, and I totally get starting off being on voices.com and voices one, two, three, you got to cut your teeth and all that kind of stuff. But it's nice to, even though our healthcare is going through challenges at this particular moment, it's still so good to be able to, I have a pension. I have healthcare. I have a union that's going to have my back if I'm in a job or they're asking me to, let's say, scream, right? As we do in sessions, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and they're not going to say, can we have 117 tags for this grocery store? We're going to pay you $100. No, they're 80 bucks a pop or whatever. Big union. Mm -hmm. But back to the very first like cool gig, I think, besides for Archway Cookies when I was five, was <laughs> I was the original voice of Lifetime. Oh, wow. Like, what was this? You know what that show 30-something? So many people are going to be too young to remember that, but it was like 30-something. Mm -hmm. It's a little like life, only with better writers only on Lifetime. So I was the first and only voice of Lifetime in New York. And I would run from session to session to session to session to session. And then my first big, anime, I'm sorry, commercial campaign was for Elizabeth Arden's Ceramide Time Complex. It's like this, you know, and I'd like trash my voice, like rehearsing for some crazy sketch for, for improv. <laughs> when I got to the session, I was much more rested. I remember going to the bathroom and being like, Bleh! and I was like, I would never do that now. Now I'm just a proponent of like using the singing straw. Um, it's my dear friend and taking a great vocal lessons from my dear friend, Amy Chapman of Voice Lab LA. You can, it's now the silver lining of all this is we can get online and teach and coach and learn and do all this different cool stuff. My dog is growling at me. What do you think? Oh my God, I know what he's growling at. I have to show you. So I got these really goofy pillows. Oh, I think I saw them <laughs> on your Instagram. Show us. Colors each for some of my girlfriends. And he thinks either A, they're real or B, they're a toy for him. Hold on. But then my first big animation thing I'll tell you in a second. Bumble, these are not for you, honey. Do you think these are real? Oh my God. Hold on. Okay. Hi, everybody. If anybody's just joining in, by the way, this is Alice's Wonderland and we do this every Wednesday, usually at 6 p.m. Today it's 6 30. So go ahead and make sure you're following me. Next week is Sarah Sherman, the casting director. So. Sarah, we love Sarah so much. So great. Yes. And Lori's back. Okay, so Lori's show back. us. So my do okay, both of them are going nuts. So all my animal loving friends, which are pretty much everyone, I got these ridiculous pillows at CVS, and they've been sitting in a pile, and the dogs have been eyeballing them. They're looking like this. <laughs> One dog Bumble that you saw was going like this. Oh, he wants to play with them. All right, guys, you can play with them. They're not. Oh my God! Look at his face. Oh, go over there and play with them. 
Oh my god! <laughs> they think it's they a toy. Bumble thinks it's a real cat or a dog. Are you letting them play with it, or is it like, no, don't touch it? Fine, it's fine. They can do whatever they want. We'll just lay all it down before we give it away. Um, <laughs> mom, I mean, dog, cootie germs. Bumble, it's go play with it. It's it's on the floor. You can go play with her, the kitty. <laughs> Made, so that was my first big cool jobs in New York were Lifetime and like Elizabeth Arden, Sarah My Time Complex Capsules. And this yeah. was when you were first getting started. So it was when stuff would air a lot. Yeah. yeah. There would be ABC, NBC, CBS, and you would get a lot of residuals because there's only three networks, which is crazy because now, right, there's, um, I love this. I'm trying to make sure nice earrings, dog and cat pillows. Yes. I'm, I feel bad if we're missing any questions. I'm so codependent. I'm like, are we missing anything? Um, it's okay. Um, guys, if you do have a question, go ahead and type it into the box at the bottom with a question mark, and then we'll make sure to pin those. And we'll ask Lori some questions. I'm not missing anything. Um, anyway, so uh, when I moved here, um, I can't remember what my first commercial gig was, but my first animated series was not Fantastic Four, uh, that I got to meet Stanley and work with him quite a bit, which was amazing but it was rather um, SWAT cats. So I'm sure you know Chris Zimmerman Salter. Yeah. Who is, she's my guardian angel because when everyone's like, I have a great voice, I'm gonna just get into voiceover. It doesn't work like that. You have to have some training, even though the trend since 2008 and moving forward into however much longer is still a much more natural read and natural read. I don't have food and those are pillows. I don't know how to help you right now, my, my, my furry child. Um, so she had me in to do a pre-Family Guy thing with Seth MacFarlane, who was graduating from Rhode Island School of Design. And he had this like thesis uh, animated series that was hysterical called Larry and Steve. It was like the pre-Family Guy show. So Chris had me in and I did that with Seth. And that was amazing. I was like, hey, your doggy needs a new mattress. <laughs> We've got you settled right over here, sir. So it was that kind of character. <laughs> Yes, reading for Family Guy testing in the waiting room at Fox with Alice Borstein, who plays Lois and everything. Uh, I, either do you want to be on camera? You can't maybe hear him, but I can. Hold on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. I think he wants. No, I just think that he wants to be on camera. I'm not sure. So, so uh, then she cast me in SWAT Cats. Your breath, Bumble. <laughs> Oof. Um, SWAT Cats. Rock Cats, thank you, was with Charlie Adler and Barry Gordon. Oh, wow. Hey, Milo and uh, Gary Owens. I play, you know, Gary Owens from Laugh-In, amazing human being and wonderful voice actor. Jim Cummings. It was like, it was like, anima like animation, huge heavy hitters, and it was awesome training. It was incredible. That was my series. Um, and I must have been 20, 20 something in my late 20s. And then, so that was cool. And then after that was Fantastic Four. And then in the same year, SpongeBob and Family Guy happened, which is, I mean, town sure, sure. Uh, training, sure. Luck and sheer amazing, like universe just being so good. Um, there's not a day that doesn't go by that it doesn't just flip me out. And it's when I write my daily gratitude list and say my prayers in the morning that I'm not just like, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. I have been so blessed and lucky. It's ridiculous. So I'm very, 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 very grateful. Do you think your daily gratitude practice helps with generating more luck? Because I can so easily go down a very slippery slope of worry and fear and there are big things to be filled with worry and fear there's there's no question our our world is a little crazy right now. and oh now you're gonna nap on camera well you can stay precious on camera <laughs> Did you do? so um um now you want to get down okay all right fine just don't growl at the pillows i think i think staying grateful for what we have um just yeah. brings more it just, it, it just like, not to get so hippy-dippy and like, you've been living in LA too long, but it just raises your vibration to where that stuff isn't so present and forward in your brain, but the gratitude. I mean, right now, even if we're all just worried and crazy and I have parents that are not doing well right now, it's like, they're going to, they're resilient as hell. And I can think of sometimes the most basic things, you know, when you're in a foul place and feeling angry and despondent and hopeless, I can be like, I have food, shelter, mm -hmm. clothing. I have my limbs, I have friends, I have my health. I mean, sometimes it's just food, shelter, clothing when you're in a funky, just despondent place, which I totally get. 
And this business is very narcissistic. So if we don't find something else to even out and replace the inherent narcissism and the inherent like, oh, it, but it's me. No, it's me. It's not me. Like it's my voice. It's my face, my type, my whatever. If you don't want me, then you're going to cast somebody else. That's fantastic. I think I learned that early on enough to where I'm used to hearing no really weird. So I'm kind of like rejection proof. I don't, I don't think about it. I mean, of course there's big things like that I want. Like when my friend wrote the Meggie Mullally role for me on Will and Grace and I didn't get it, I was like, yeah, yeah. So of course there's going to be things you're like, son of a bitch. But, um, <laughs> but right. But Meggie Mullally is brilliant and a friend and I, there's no one like her on this planet. But I think the daily gratitude, I'll be honest, I have a couple of text threads going and to the best of our ability, we try to text each other every day what we're grateful for. And then I try to write it down and just a little, I have this really cheesy little thing from Rite Aid and I just, it's small and it's blue. So I don't forget to just sort of write it down, you know? Um, and then I remember one time I was in a funky place. I think it was my therapist and she was like, can you write a hundred things you're grateful for? And I was like, mascara, um, $20 Amazon Christmas trees. My parents, my, I got, I found a great deal on draperies uh, at, you know, at Bed Bath & Beyond and my grandparents who gave me creativity and all of a sudden it goes deeper and deeper and deeper, not just material, physical things, but, you know, I'm grateful for supportive parents. I'm grateful for all the opportunities I've had. There's always something to be grateful for. Even in the biggest shit storm of life, there's always something to be grateful for. Yeah. I mean, looking at your hair. <laughs> Look at your hair. I'm grateful for your hair hair i'm going to say also what i think is so interesting is um how imdv just points out your curvaceous looking body as like what is Lori allen's known for which and it also says i'm five nine now i would love to go in and change the i'm not going to change the curvaceous body <laughs> when i was really heavy and then i've been smaller and now i'm somewhere in between but i was like i don't know if i want this like, that's okay i'm not sure. whoever Sort of like Wikipedia, they can go in and write all sorts of things. Yeah, somebody okay. changed my Wikipedia. It's the wrong middle name. So can somebody else please change it back? It's Dawn. Change it back. <laughs> but someone's like, you're five nine, and I'm like, I'm so not five nine, but thank you. <laughs> I love being five nine. Hmm. You're love five it. nine to me. You are too. <laughs> so what was the audition for Pearl for SpongeBob like? You know, so long ago, I don't always remember, but I remember having yeah. so much fun. And that's why I think ultimately, if I sort of sew together some pieces, I, I love coaching and teaching so much because, you know, if you, here's just a random thing of Christmas cards, peace on earth, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, everyone always sends me the animal pretty cards. This one is from my friend who, for Mercy for Animals, sent me a card. Look at their beautiful card, by the way. Aww. Peace on earth. Thank you so much for all the wonderful, wonderful support for Mercy for Animals. May this be a year of healing, compassion, equality, and unity for people, animals, and the planet. Anyway, I digressed. But let's say you get a picture, as you know, for an animated thing. She's a, um, she's a cow with big old eyes and eyelashes, right? So you, if you get a drawing, as you know, you're like, yes, and you can take a cue, somewhat of a cue, some kind of cue mm -hmm. from the drawing. If she's got like batting eyelashes, a pretty cow, whatever. And Pearl was huge. So it said that she had this big head and it said that she was, you know, the biggest creature in Bikini Bottom and that she was sort of like a daddy's girl and she was always complaining, but very lovable. So I was like, <laughs> what if I just made her girls like obsessed with the mom? She's like, dad. And I was like, but she has to have like this deeper voice because she's big. So I was like, dad, I mean, I can't even believe it. And then I added in like a sort of my version of like, not even a valley girl, but just like, oh gosh. Like, to, you know, and it just came out. And then I must have done some kind of maybe laugh or a daddy that the lines were daddy. But so then what's great is that if you have the ridiculous good fortune, oh my God, thank you, God, universe, Oprah, whoever's in charge. <laughs> um, of being on a show for a long enough time, like then it's like, oh, daddy, because I wanted her to be big and girly and feminine. She's huge compared to everybody else, right? So yeah. I just that she talked like that, that that would probably be like girly, would check that. Teenagery, kind of spoiled, but with a heart of gold. And it just came up to be that. And like, uh, and she would have this laugh, but it would sound ridiculous because she's so big. <laughs> Pink. Did you go in? Did you get to do it in person? God, that's such a good question. I no, isn't that awful? 
oh my God, I don't know, Allison. I don't know if we went in in person or if we did it at our agents, because back then we weren't doing stuff from home. Um, I don't remember. That's a great question. I, have to, I literally, if I could text, which I can technically do, at the same time, find out if that indeed is true. I can't even believe yeah. that. Answer to that. Um, I, don't, I don't think we, we had to have gone in for callbacks. Callbacks, yeah. You've been in a million callbacks at Fox or Sony or Cartoon Network or whatever where you float in. I, maybe we did. Maybe we did. <laughs> but there's a spinoff show about our pre-SpongeBob life where Pearl's a baby. And I really hope I'm allowed to talk about this so I don't get fired. But it's um, so deep in the in the podcast, I think. Right, right. So I'm a baby. And so I get to be baby Pearl. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. So amazing, so fun. And Tom Kinney, who is SpongeBob, yay Tom, is the nicest human being in the whole wide world, a dear friend, and he's married to Jill Talley, who is so talented. They're the sweetest couple, I love them and I love their children so much. And he has been directing SpongeBob for a while and he's such a phenomenal director. He's so fun, so so passionate, so concise, just, you know, he is, he is the just phenomenal. And the cast has been the same, you know, core 11 people for so long. So it's, uh, it's extraordinary. It's, it's bizarre. When I hear myself saying it, then I realize like, wait, what? That sounds really cool. You should be really grateful. I'm like, that is so cool. And I am really grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you can get on a great show and then it goes two seasons and you're like, but it was such a great show. How <laughs> so good. Like to have that that longevity is so exciting. I mean, I love to hear stories like that, you know, and you completely deserve it. And Tom Kenny and everyone on that show is so talented. So what was it like working with Steven Hillenburg? Mm. So Steven Hillenburg, for anyone who's watching, is was the creator of SpongeBob and he majored in marine biology. And I think, I don't know what exactly what you would call his art degree, what he studied, if it was anim exactly animation drawing or what have you. And so he unfortunately passed at a very young age, which is just, just still just, I'm like, I get sort of speechless about it. He was the most humble, kind, funny, supportive. He didn't even have the ego. He was just, he just wanted people to experience joy. And I really believe that SpongeBob is such a reflection on Steven about just this optimistic character who just enjoys life and wants people to be happy. I mean, it was just that he's that guy. He's sort of like this weird alter ego of SpongeBob. Yeah, I got. I just got an ASMR tingle up my scalp. You like, did. I have goosebumps for you when you, as you're telling me this, like, yeah, you know, yeah. His his wife is hysterical. I love her so much. We had a going away, a virtual Zoom going away party for one of our amazing uh, production designers who started the show really before we did because he was doing all the jewel rings, and he's. Um, retiring and and we had a um a little zoom party everyone was just so emotional it was so cool to see what goes on as you know with people just think it's like drawing and then voice but the production of it and all the people that are colorists and storyboard designers and people that are in charge of making the mouths move or, or whatnot of certain characters or all the characters and so it's just mind-blowing and i got to see steven's wife and just the slideshow of everybody on there and the different voice directors we've had amazing Andrea Romano and such and just uh I, I just I owe I owe that man like every I owe him my life yeah yeah well we're all very grateful too yeah you know just extraordinary his um I I, I literally just get choked up and almost speechless because he's will always be to me he was just such a cheerleader. He would just get such a kick out of it. And even when he wasn't feeling well, he would still come to sessions and just crack up. Like he loved, he loved it. He didn't want there to be, you know, just these ridiculous amount of toys and just like it to get, you know, massively syndicated. You know, it is now and all that kind of stuff, but he just didn't want it to be like exploited. He wanted it pure and simple, just as those characters are, you know, especially yeah. SpongeBob. So that was his, his wish always was to keep it pure and simple and to never dilute 
dilute, dilute, um, the, the, the message and the, the, the true love that they have for each other and their friends. I mean, that's what the show's about. Right. So, yeah. And embracing like your weird. Yes. Self, you know, like what, where did he come up with this? Like it, it's, it's okay to be who you are. Yeah. I'm totally freaking weird and cool and strange and, uh, big and loud. And I was like, Pearl's really my alter ego. She's very girly and very loud and loves lipstick and loves to smell good and loves to go to the mall. So you couldn't pay, you couldn't pay me a million dollars to go to the mall right now. Literally. A million? A I mean, you wouldn't go to the mall for a million? Nope. Just to pick up bath bombs at Lush? In and out? Maybe, maybe Lush. A million. Maybe three, your vegan company. <laughs> but I would run in with a mask and my shield to go get maybe a bath bomb to stay relaxed during COVID. But that's about it. So are those glasses are, th that's See, my new, my new glasses are fabulous. These, uh, these are, no, these are the ones that go in the shield. Oh, okay. Yes. I mean, it looks great both ways. You're We're gonna get the runway right now. Are you five nine? <laughs> <laughs> you can be a runway model, I think. You're so funny. I modeled as a kid, just so Did bizarre. You? that I got like, and they're like, and then I was a ballet dancer for quite some time. And they were like, the teacher was like, um, so to my mom, you know, Mrs. Denneberg, that's my full name, Lori Ellen Denneberg. And she was like, I just, your daughter has a uh, large thighs, very athletic. And she's quite spunky. We always put her first in the recital, but, and she's, cause I was like built like in seventh grade with boobs and thighs. And so she was like, <laughs> get into musical theaters and jazz. And I was like, yeah, we got magic to do. And the showstoppers. I love all my showstopper friends. We had a showstopper reunion last year. <laughs> so yay for musical theater geeks. But yeah, before I, you know, went, um, uh, I did like a lot of just like color me mind. Remember that? Like what season are you? Are you a fall? Are you an April? Like winters can wear reds and blacks really well. I apparently am in autumn, which means earth tones. Eh. I'm in autumn too. Yeah. I'm not listening to that. Today, though, but. Sweater that's like purple and pink. So you can wear yeah, it. I think it's kind of wintery though, don't you think? I love it's it. It's all right. I love right. it. Thank you. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was curious also, um, uh, you are Bonnie's mom in Toy Story. So being part of like the, the Pixar world and everything, um, I mean, you worked on a ton of actually many Pixar movies. So how, what's it like? What was it like kind of getting that role? Was it just something you read at your agency or? No, oh, there's a loop group, if you will, of a mm -hmm. bunch of people I owe the, a huge part of my career, not only to Chris Zimmerman Salter, but to Mickey McGowan, who was sort of in charge of, well, was in charge of getting sort of a cast of crazy characters of voice talent, like Jess Harnell, and Danny Mann, and I'm gonna, I'm missing so many people, so you have to forgive me. Um, and Tara Strong, Ray Newman, and Mindy Sterling, and E.G., Debbie, they, did no, they? They may have, maybe I didn't do the same films that they did, I'm not sure. Um, but um, why am I missing some of the guys? Jim Ward, and just some amazing voice talent. I'm, I'm having a total brain fart, so you'll have to forgive me. But we, I was like, I don't do looping, which is so ridiculously vain and, and ridiculous of me. And then we went in and it's very cool and intimidating and awesome because you're on the Disney soundstage with the biggest mic you've ever seen. It's like the size of, and it looks like it's Pearl compared to the rest <laughs> of the characters. It's huge. And the guy named Doc, who is the main engineer there is awesome. Yeah. And you're, once the picture, once the film is almost ready to get to picture, you know, picture's not locked quite yet so they're going to need all these other incidental voices that aren't the main characters and so once in a blue moon you'll become a main character if you've sort of were one of the like let's say you and i were in a looping session for pixar and like okay we need two girls talking about curly hair and sweaters we need yeah. to oh, jump up to the mic please and that's when improv comes in handy yeah. always telling actors voice actors particular well any on camera or voice you have to take improv you have to be so directable fast on your feet be able to make choices, be able to take direction. Yes, even if, the, especially if it's poor direction or if it's a shitty script, whatever, you have to be able to be like, yes, yes, and, yes, and, yes, and. So that's the, the toy story was, you know, just a kind of a warm, like Bonnie, you know, and just checking in on her once the toys went to, to Bonnie. Um, and then Toy Story 4, you know, the story continues. And, and I have a feeling it will continue to continue. So mm -hmm. 
great. And it's so, it's such a beautiful, oh my God, Toy Story 3, Toy Story 4, Inside Out, which I had the pleasure of being in. They're oh, just, yeah. <laughs> but they're not just for kids. They're not just for families. They're just for, I mean, the humanity in which these guys have written these, just extraordinary films about belonging and inclusivity and family and what's important to you and standing up for yourself. And, you know, sometimes your chosen family is just as, and very much as part of your family as your biological family. I mean, they're just the stories about longing and yearning and parenting, but it's really so much more than that in every way. And um, so, yeah, so to do that uh, was extraordinary. And just the, the Toy Story 4 premiere, I was like, I'm at Canary. I mean, between what you and I do, yeah. I don't get starstruck very often. Yeah. Kind of cool. like, <laughs> that's Keanu Reeves. And because he's so shy, so we were being gathered for like a cool cast photo. And, um, <laughs> and um, I had some fun guests with me and I was like, oh my God. And I just said, I'm just going to go do it. I'm just going to, cause he's known for being just a wonderful humanitarian of a guy. Like if you, mm -hmm. not in a creepy way, like there was some woman who he helped when her car broke down and she almost got sideswiped on the side of the road and he waited with her while she called AAA and, you know, paid for her to get her tired or whatever. He's just this lovely guy. And um, I just so like, just absolutely the most inappropriate. I was like, hi. I just want to say that I, uh, I'm in the film with you. We were never in the studio together recording things. And his character is hysterical. Um, what is the name of his biker character? Somebody has to put it in the chat. Um, Dirk, Dirk Kaboom, I think is his name. Uh, ah, yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You know what's so, so funny is I was on the loop group for that, Toy Story 4. Oh! Yeah, so we looped like all the other toys in the background in the in the Dirk Kaboom scene and... Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Wasn't that so much fun? Oh my God, it's the most fun. It's crazy. We're so yeah. lucky and it's so ridiculous. And if you want to be a voice actor, you have to be willing to be ridiculous and loud and fun and play. And isn't that, don't you kind of find like that's when your best work comes out when you're not over thinking? When you're just like, oh, you see the guy, you, you know, five of us get up and we all do the line and... Yeah, your instincts are always going to be right. Duke Kaboom. That's right. It was Duke Kaboom. Duke Kaboom. Yes. Duke Kaboom. So yeah, Duke I just... Kaboom. And I said, the animated Tom Kinney's band into Spongebob. That's right. Um, Which Tom episode? Was He's, I love His band is called um, uh, Tom Kinney and the High Seas. And the High Seas, yeah extraordinarily like the most vibrant he's like i, I don't even ha i don't even have an adjective for him his his, his if I, just go look up tom kenny in the high seas he's got mm -hmm. like uh um like the swagger of like elvis but he's got so much energy and his voice is so sturdy and strong he can scream and he knows every genre of music but it's like the blues and it's like this old school funky music and like swing music and everyone of all ages, shapes, size, colors is out dancing to his music. It's so much fun. I cannot wait till they go live in person again. It's amazing. Yeah, let's go see them. Some benefit. And he's always, you know, uh, God bless him. I to people when he's out performing and he just gets like sort of swarmed and he loves it. And he's so, so, um, yeah. What were we talking about before that shoot? Uh, we were talking about your role as Bonnie's mom. Yeah. So, that's extraordinary to see that storyline um, with Maddie plays Bonnie plays my daughter. Um, and I met my husband for the first time at the premiere. <laughs> He's hot. I was like, you married in real life? No, I didn't go there. Um, <laughs> but I don't get starstruck easily, but Tom Hanks and Keanu Reeves, that was great. And Tom and I had a lovely conversation about animals and life and dogs and health and voiceover and family. And he's just, he is everything that you would think he is. That's, that's Tom Hanks. And Keanu Reeves, oh, that's what I was saying. I was like, hi, um, we never were recording together our scenes, but I just wanted to say, I think you're just such a lovely human being for helping people when they have a stranded car or things like that. And it would just be weird if I died and never had an out missed an opportunity to tell you that I think you're an extraordinary human being for helping people that you don't even know. And he was like, okay. No, he wasn't. He's very, um, you know. But from one sort of like, you know, from one crazy animal rescue lady to like that kind of guy, I just, I, I just had to tell him, I just had to tell, I had to tell him, awkward, but he listened. We've all had those moments. I one time 
inappropriately touched Deepak Chopra on the shoulder because like I had read so many of his books that I thought we were like close. I was like, hi, hi. Uh, like he was like, know you. I know. You know who is so touchy feely fabulous is Mark Hamill, my friend. He is so yeah. flippin' funny and great. When I was on this show called AP Bio on NBC, this is very sort of overprotective Jewish mother who like, you know, pays her way practically to get her son to get uh, to be the school president or whatever. And oh, the art imitates life. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Nick, who is a young actor, and Mark was like tweeting like, I'm doing this as if I'm typing. I'm sure he was on his phone. I don't think he was doing this. I think he's probably doing this or this. Yeah. So he was doing this and he said to NBC and AP by, he was like, I need to see, I don't know what my character's name is like, Dee Dee Rosenfeld or something. I don't remember. And so he was like, NBC, we need to see more of her. And they responded. And I was like, thanks, Mark. You know, so um, my was like, yeah, we should do a fun, you know, Comic-Con scene in your, in when, when the show goes to, goes to Netflix or wherever it's going to go. Um, we have a great finale thing that we are going to rewrite a whole uh, finale episode where it's going to be all of us at a, at a signing because weird stuff happens at some of these signings. I have a feeling you know all about that. Probably not to the same extent, but <laughs> I've only witnessed modicum of weirdness. I'm sure you've heard. I mean, it really is just so, um, I didn't turn my notifications off. So the place that I go work out is just like, Hey, we're starting to work out. Um, the, um, uh, what was I saying? Um, brain fart. What was I just saying? Uh, Comic-Cons, weirdness. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. I just got, I forgot to turn my notifications off. So it's like, Hur. yeah, they're the best place to stay in touch with people. I, I, it, my heart is like sick. I miss Dragon Con so much. I miss all the, all the fans to be able to meet. I've done things which have been really nice. It's not quite the same, but it's still really lovely able to do that because I miss you guys and it's really oh it's just it's 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 hard and it's just so great to meet kids and I know I have this but I always want all the serve people folks with service animals to come see me so I have I have to kind of I got to go back I want to post like a whole Instagram post about all the fabulous people that and their fabulous service animals that I meet at conventions they're they're just so fun and wow. uh, I do. I really miss everybody. It's such a great opportunity to travel and see folks that you just never have the chance of, of saying hi to, you know, and they're so grateful for you. And I'm like, well, I'm so grateful for you. Oh my God. Are you kidding? You know, I have had, you know, a dad take my, uh, I like to wear red lipstick and the guy take my napkin out of the trash can and like sniff it and take it for his own. But I was like, you know what, if you need to do that, then so be it. Just don't follow me to my car. As long as he's not like a DNA scientist though. DNA. You know, I, ugh, you don't know what it could do with those cells. I didn't want to think about that. There might be another lawyer running around. Wait, I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. Is your, so did your parents name Allison with the way it's spelled A-L-I-C-Y-N? Yeah. It's a funny story, actually. My mom was watching a movie when she was pregnant. It's called The Sentinel. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. it. Yeah, it's a horror movie from the 70s. Yeah. And um, the woman who stars in the movie is like a beautiful fashion model that lives in New York City. And um, her name's Allison Parker. And then um, she later moves into an apartment that's the gateway to the hell and um, gets drawn into like a very weird. She becomes the sentinel. She has to like watch over the gateway to hell. Right. So she named me after that character. <laughs> And then, so and she, but she didn't tell me. Tell it, it my whole life since kindergarten. She she told me it was just because it, I was special. <laughs> that my name was you were special, special baby. So I never minded that like there was no license plates. People could never spell my name. People are always mispronouncing it. I was just like, that's who I am. That's and then when I was nineteen, she told me the truth, and I was like, ugh. I like watched clips on YouTube. Don't watch clips on YouTube. It's that's like the worst thing to go down the rabbit hole. Be like, because like four hours later, you're like, oh my God, you know, you've un uncovered some really strange thing. My mom was in The Exorcist. So my mom's an actress. <gasps> she didn't have a big part in it, but, and I, I, to this day, everyone's like, don't you love scary movies? I'm like, no, it freaks my, it fucking, sorry, makes yeah. my freak out because 
she because she, because now she knows that it freaks me out so she'll do like this linda like eh, and just do this face i'm like nah, nah, nah. so like <laughs> prom I think in senior year I'd gone to like everybody's prom I was like it's my own prom now all right oh great. my god me too seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh crop and I didn't realize how lucky I was I was like that was really fun um you know we had baby's breath because I'm older than you so you'd have to be like your hair part of the middle with baby's breath and everything but in my own prom I was like sorry so this is the 12th lap around the prom winter solstice get together dances let's do this and so you know we drank and whatever kids aren't supposed to do before don't do that before before no 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 before uh leaving for this dance or whatever and i was like i somehow said to my friend we were all double dating or whatever i was like just as long as you're not going to like show the exorcist before i don't know cut to like oh my gosh let's put corsages on and they had ready queued up and ready to go and i was like no like i was like i'm not going i stayed in the car in the limousine in the car for most of my senior prom i was that traumatized by watching the exorcist as i was getting pinned a corsage from my friends who were trying to be funny and i was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Aww. yeah everybody was dancing to lady in red dancing with me yeah, you so this far apart yeah I, my arms but yeah this far apart well not by high school by high school it was like well oh i know get a little <laughs> feel <feely up-y. laughs> Um, gosh, that's so funny because it's a very similar story. I went to so many proms as well. Proms for like <laughs> everybody. So it's a, and the, the writing plays and putting them on in your backyard. I do feel like you're my soul sister. I know. Um, before I what you sure your mom or my mom don't need to have a discussion. Is there something we don't know? Maybe you're, we're both from the East coast. What? What was that? I said the Emerson connection alone too. I'm like, because after all this time, we haven't been friends on Facebook. I mean, we our circles have coexisted the entire time we've both been here and been in the business. Yeah. So when I was like finally friending you, I was like Emerson College, no way. <laughs> yeah, so we were like diapers when I was in college, but still. No, no, I don't think so. But well, <laughs> elementary school or junior high school. I had my trapper keeper. <laughs> my glasses my retainer um I, but i do want to get to some of the um yeah did you have that i wore sorry that's my friend um texting me sorry uh asking how i'm holding up great alicia if you're watching don't text me later <laughs> um, but i'm glad she slept and ate ramen noodles because it always feels better um i have to can i turn if i turn that off will it turn our volume off no no. Okay. Gotcha. It's not, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, wait, what was it you were going to say? A question or was I saying one last thing as I'm prone to I do? I think you were saying one last thing, I think. Okay. Sorry. What was it? Somebody who's keeping up needs to tell us. I don't mm-hmm. even know what saying. Oh, I know. I was going to get to some of the audience questions. Yes. Yes, yes. please. So yes, hopefully yes. you guys are still on. Um, what gave you the inspection for voice acting? Probably meant inspiration, right? Inspiration. I think it's maybe yeah. an autocorrect or mistake. What uh, gave you? 74. Rail Chief 74. What gave me the inspiration, I think, was when I did my first, well, as I said, my parents were voice actors. And so I just watched them, like, sort of be storytellers, even if it was, like, serious about the news or about mascara or a jingle. And I watched them, like, because to me, I think voiceover is the truest form of storytelling because you can't raise an eyebrow. You can't put your hands on your hips. Nothing. So it's all in your voice. And I find that fascinating. And I just found that fascinating. And I remember when I was um, in a theater major in high school and did showstoppers, you know, like, don't do drugs, kind of goofy showstoppers. Mm-hmm. But I love that. And then I remember thinking when I went off to college, I was like, you know what, I should maybe have voiceovers as my day job. I'll have my dad put me together a demo. And I just remember thinking, this is the best way to to storytell and to come up with characters, oh my gosh, and sort of just like live in their heads and come up with these voices. And so I'm always, in, I don't mean to ever make fun of anyone, but I'm constantly like, my ears are like, bloop, they're like antennas. I'm constantly listening to um, the way somebody speaks, uh, uh, whether it's male, female, a celebrity, a dialect, I think that's a great exercise for people who want to be voice actors, mm-hmm. is to just keep their ears open and listen to things that fascinate them and just read stuff with 
with this with that character in mind and it's a great way to just start a list of characters and um so that was really my my fascination i think sort of started there as a kid for sure um jim tasker who's a really amazing uh trailer voiceover artist he's yes. a lot of yes. big t tv t um theatrical trailer campaigns is asking what's your favorite character voice your who is your favorite character of uh, mine Oh goodness! Of mine, um, my phone is cute. Just ha I mean, Pearl Simmons and Diane just have a crazy for change for good and want to make sure that all evil exists in the world. And so there's the boss, Metal Gear, who I wish were the. I love Joe Biden. I'm so thrilled he's our president elect. And let's not even go down that road, perhaps. But. Um, <laughs> The boss, I mean, the boss, Sue Richards, um, Diane, and Pearl, I really just, I love them all because they're all such, they're all badasses in their own way, whether they're all young. very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of like being like, choose your favorite pet. I, yeah, I'm not going to whisper. I was going to be like, boys don't, they're both just staring at me. They, they <laughs> run fascinated with the pillows. They think. And I don't, I don't know, but mm -hmm. the seat taking in shortly. Maybe that's why. Maybe they're like, hey, what's up, mom? I think we can all agree 2020 is very stinky. Oh, God. Um, God. Yeah. Peace Walker Snake believe in Santa Claus. What was your re reaction? I didn't see the rest of that question. I'm your sorry. Metal Gear Solid, Peace Walker, Snake, Big Boss believe in Santa Claus. What was your reaction? Is that? That he believed. He. You tell me. So what? So so so. It snake believed in Santa Claus. What would I think? Hmm. Uh, I would probably have to. I'd probably have to set Snake straight. What do because you mean? That, because it's my job, no matter how complicated my relationship with Snake is, is to tell him the truth. And the truth is that there is a Santa Claus. Right. Okay. Cool. You're kind of a little scared. Um, and and. We just have a, a couple more minutes, but um, I was curious. I know this has been a very different sort of year, um, COVID-19 particularly, but also a lot of politics, racial injustice, and everything people are dealing with um, on so many levels. And I just was wondering, this year, do you have any words of inspiration for our viewers that might be in need of some uplifting energy? You know, I think I do, which is that um, staying in gratitude, finding your tribe, speaking out and using your voice in whatever way you can to speak out for injustice. And even if you think like, well, I'm going to do some text for the, the runoff votes in Atlanta. I'm going to do, um, you know, I'm going to tweet something else that's important to me. It doesn't, you know, talking about mental health during this time, whether you need to be in a 12 step program and be on medication to help out during these crazy times. Or if you have, you know, medical, me, um, uh, mental illness has still just a, such a stigma around it for some folks. And I'm not quite sure why. Um, I know that if I didn't uh, go to my therapist every week and get help in that area, I would be just, uh, just a walking mess. And so during this time, I think your health is radical. Self care is not an option. Mm -hmm. It's preservation. And some days that looks different. Sometimes it's me dancing to to be real, like on a loop. Like when I hear a song that I like, forget it. Got to be real, got to be real. Or it's sitting in a puddle and having my tears, or it's calling a friend, or it's not looking at the phone. It's turning off the news. It's checking in on someone or leaving them alone. So self-care to me looks different every day. And I think that's, I think we can't be surprised about, for me, the roller coaster of emotions is like this right now. And we, t I know I don't, sometimes I don't feel safe. I don't feel protected. All of us between the election and who's in charge, who's not in charge and what they're not doing to support us and suppressing uh, all sorts of untruths to, to where people just are at each other's throats. It's like, what can you do to stay in your body? Like I had that great fortune of hearing that today from my dear friend, Anne, who was like, you know, are you in your body? Can you just sit down on the floor? I heard some really sad, disturbing news. And I just, I sat on the floor and I just took 10 deep breaths. So are you deep breathing? 
So self-care, because things are going to go up and down, find the things that make you grounded. Some days it's going to be a dance party. Like you and I talked about that, like, let's do a dance break. And sometimes it's going to be, you know, reaching out to a friend and saying, can you just listen? Or how can I listen? Checking up on a friend and saying, do you need anything? So I just radical, radical, radical self-care, sitting in the bathtub and crying. Just you sleep like a baby. Your skin looks really good after you cry. Can't you tell? Let those out. Let the screams out. I told my friends to take a pillow and be like, God damn. My <laughs> they got, because it stays trapped and then you get sick. Yeah. Got to come out. The, all these emotions have to come out somehow, somewhere appropriately. Mm -hmm. I said to my neighbor, if you hear me screaming, crying, it's either me because I'm a coach. So I'm either coaching people, working myself, but usually my studio will drown out most of that. I said, but I'm very emotional during this time. It's like, if you hear me saying really inappropriate things to my kids, you know, because they're four and six and I'm trying to hold it together. I was like, you got a deal, you know? <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's a radical, radical, radical self-care going back to the basics. Can you at least just spread up your bed in the morning? Are you eating right? Are you taking vitamins? Did you eat today? Did you shower today? Or at least you, did you shower two days or three days ago? <laughs> you know, right. So, and you know, that as a mom, it's like, you have to, you're a mom and a wife and a diva voiceover extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. You got respect. And some days you just have to say, hey, guys, my I don't my friend Barry says it beautifully. He's an amazing life coach. And he's like, he uses this term. I don't have the bandwidth. I'm so sorry. And I love that. Like I had to just sometimes you have to step away from emails, calls. It's just like sometimes, you you know, no is a complete sentence. No is a powerful, complete sentence. I'm so sorry if I hurt your feelings. I'm not able to do that. I'm not able to do that right now. No. Or yes, I'm going to join this, join this last minute Zoom where they're doing having a dance party. It's like. Whatever you need to do, self-care is going to look different. But that radical self-care and honoring whatever you need, checking in with yourself, because we're in flight or fight most of the time right now between COVID and the election. And the election is over, for God's sakes. But w what our person is doing, um, that's really like affecting. I've been having nightmares. So it's like, are you able to, again, just reroute and like a gently taking a horse by its reins and gently coming back to self? Mm -hmm. What do I need? How can I take care of myself? Mm -hmm. really stopping down to breathe to know what you might even need to then take that action most likely it's probably to just stop and breathe mm -hmm. absolutely and maybe forward me the link to that zoom dance party uh yeah i love d nice if you don't know who d nice is i don't know if we're going to get cut off but d nice is an amazing dj a very famous dj did uh, the obama inauguration he said so cool he was he was a rapper and musician talent himself but he's extraordinary and he went on instagram in the very beginning of the pandemic to have like a dance party and give me some hearts and people know who d nice is so d nice um is uh and so he's basically this he told a couple of friends and he's a famous dj very well-known dj and then he told a couple of his peeps and like it was a ton of people the next night he said okay tell all your people melba moore Michelle Obama, Shaka Khan, you know, Barry Gordy, um, Halle Berry, like everybody was in this room dancing. So he, so D nice, the letter D and the word nice, D nice. Um, he has raised like three mil, like millions upon millions for like, you know, um, get out the vote and black youth and black colleges and making sure that, um, you know, that there was no voter fraud, like to set up a whole campaign, given millions of dollars to the CDC, all while listening and dancing to his music. And then he'll save it in his IGTV. So you can just put that on and get on the elliptical or just do your dancing in place or squats and get your hand weights. And you've got an in-home workout with the best playlist. And they're different every time. Yeah, I want to check it out. Yeah, That's he's so fun. voice and his spinning records for good. He's amazing. We need like a side FaceTime though, so we can like... I know. You know, you got to talk to your friend on the dance. They're like, hey. and so with, I love this song. Got to be real. That's like, I don't know why I love that song so much. It makes me ridiculously happy. It's a great song. Yeah. Well, I have really enjoyed, I mean, I could talk to you all night. I've, you know, other questions, but I think, you know, I think it's time I to power them off and I promise to make them one sentence. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, gratitude journal. <laughs> Uh, I guess, my, you know, I just didn't, we didn't get a chance to, to talk much about um, your role in Family Guy. So you talked a little bit about um, Diane and, and sort of um, how you went to the the um, audition for that. Wait, that was for the pilot that Chris 
so right so I was for lois mm -hmm. you know played by alex borstein oh pita who's so ridiculously talented and i walked in and seth was like hi and i was like oh my god hi so i just i i had done the pre family guy show with him yeah. and then we we wrote letters and cards and you know i think we've like maybe when i first got my first clamshell apple you know um macbook or whatever and we would say hi but it had been years so i didn't and the script was wildly different even though it was about a guy and his talking dog mm -hmm. so by the time i got in there i was like oh my gosh so you know tom and diane will live happily ever after in, in the history books even though my character was killed off like 12 years ago thank you seth for being able to pay my mortgage but also for the just to be a part of his world of his brain mm -hmm. and ridiculous talent and his sister is so lovely and i was good friends with his family and and his mom was a wonderful animal activist. May she rest in peace. And his, he's just a, an absolute joy. And what he's created is phenomenal. He's just so talented. And I'm so grateful to have been a part of his, uh, and Adam and his tiny world of talent and love. Yeah. And um, where can fans um, see you next? Are you appearing at any virtual cons in 2021? I'm so glad you said that. There's a, I have done a couple and, um, I love my folks, talent, talent for con, uh, talent for cons. They are great. And then I got asked when we're going to be doing a Metal Gear reunion. Oh no way! Eating something funny. Um, we've got most of the primary cast gathered, so that is so exciting. I can't even believe it. I can't say. I literally can't say anything more because a I don't know much, and b I'm not allowed. But I don't know if I was supposed to say that, but I did. <laughs> but it will be it will be mind blowing because we all haven't seen each other in years much less work together. And as you know, in video games, you're not always, most often you're not in the same room with somebody yeah. so still acting and having great voice directors like Chris Zimmerman in your ear and Charlie Adler, who's my crazy mentor and dear friend. They're both just amazing human beings, but having them in your ear is a good voice director. You love him. You're in love with him. You, you know, it's either him or you that stays alive. Like it's just the, the, the what's in your ear from the, the voice director is so important. Um, so that's what made that game so special that I know you're a part of as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we love that game. It's, 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 it's iconic is an understatement. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful game. It's very cinematic. It's beautiful to look at. So there'll be something that way that people can find us. Okay. So yeah, definitely. If you, if you want, I'll share the info with any of, um, any of our folks that happen to be, but everybody that's on the stream right now that came on from my side, if you're not already following Lori, make sure to follow her. And if anybody enjoyed the show, we do this every Wednesday, including Eight. all through the holidays because we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Why not? So next week is uh, casting director Sarah Sherman. She cast Animaniacs, Looney Tunes. She's had a real busy year. Um, she worked for Disney for 12 years, Phineas and Ferb, and um, a ton of other projects. So um, tune in if you want to hear kind of the other side of um, Fascinating. Uh, voice acting, which is the voice directing and the casting, which, which she does. Um, so yeah, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And um, we look forward to seeing you next time. Lori, you're an angel. Give your thank pups, you. give, give your big pups a big kiss for me. And thank um, you. Give your gorgeous husband. Oh my God, your husband is phenomenal. And your little boy's you're cute. He's so sweet, he's sweetie. They're both sweeties. Okay. Okay, well, we'll talk to you soon, Lori. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>